Oh, hey, Ryder, come back here. Come look. Ryder, what are you doing? You wanna sit right in my lap? Look, see that? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. We have a full kiln of completely glazed stuff. It's lots of interesting things. And uh, we are, this is my office down here right now. I actually don't have internet at my house, so I edit videos at my house, and then I come here, and this is where I upload them. So we are uploading, I think we're uploading the kiln number 27, and I think we're unloading kiln number 29. So how's that for kiln unloadings? All right, so let me get this uploaded, and then we're gonna unload the kiln. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. Appreciate it. All right, it says it's gonna take about 30 minutes. So it should take about five to 10 minutes. A little office reference there, if you got that. All right, let's unload this kiln. Oh, just kidding. Let's actually just walk over here and open it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got some of that pink back there. I thought that would drip a little more. Got some of the glass around the rim. Those are cool. And then a bunch of mugs. All right, let's do it. Okay, I gotta give a shout out to my sweet patrons on the Patreon page. Shelly Decker, Andre Eubanks, Michelle Bertock, Lost Pawn, Zachary Smith, Hessler, Marla Anspan, Cass Forsberg, Carla Barnett, Angela. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. Shout out to you. And if you are thinking about being a patron, go check out the Patreon page. It's just patreon.com slash John the Potter. And now we're gonna snap our fingers and all this pottery is gonna go back into the kiln. Ready? So I totally just started that kiln unloading it and I thought that I was recording, but I wasn't recording. So I pulled this bowl out already, which turned out very nice and pulled out these guys. And I thought that this was gonna drip a lot more. Like I kind of layered the glaze on there and it didn't. So I know for next time, can be even more cavalier with this clay so that it drips, drip, drip, drip. This was a little tester kinda. So it's got this glass around the rim and I thought that that would turn like a pinkish color but it turned totally white. So it was kinda weird, not my favorite. Not my fave. So when I was just talking into the camera and I thought that it was recording and I wasn't recording, I was talking about Christmas and how we just got done with the Art Wander and that's always the end of September and now we kind of start thinking about Christmas already because Christmas is that next season where a lot of people are buying stuff. I mean, that's like when everybody buys their stuff. So tell me, are you thinking about Christmas already? If you're a potter, are you making stuff for Christmas? If you're a consumer and a person, are you buying gifts already? And if so, what are you buying? What are the things that you're gonna buy? What are those Christmas presents? Or those pots that you're gonna do? Okay, so Pine Tree. Minnesota. Let's focus in on that. There we go. Pine tree, Minnesota. Another one. Another pine tree. And then I got a, a bunch of Waconia, Minnesota mug because those are, have always been really popular. This one is a dock scene. Dock, MN, Waconia. That's, that turned out really, really cool. I like that a lot. That will definitely, definitely sell. So what I learned a lot from the art show, the Art Wander, was that all the Minnesota mugs that had like unique things in them, like you know, writing in them that were Waconia, Waconia, uh, MN with pine trees, like MN with pine trees. All those sold really well. Which means that I should make more, right? A lake scene, lake scene with a little moon in there. Ooh, there's a Minnesota with trees, MN, and a little drip over top. It's kind of cool. And then we got bunch of ocean drip mugs. So same thing, that dock and lake scene in there. What the heck is wrong with this thing? Oh, I just took a picture. Huh. This one is just has trees in it. Another MN with trees, another trees. So this, I was just testing that Chun Plum over top of black 
and it really, it just, it's okay. It's not my favorite. Not my favorite. Here's a, I, don't, I can't figure out what I'm gonna call that yet. That pink and, pink and white glaze. It's cool though, I like it. So this little bowl was that Chun Plum with floating blue on it. I think somebody on Instagram sent me a picture and said she does blue rutile on top of the Chun Plum and it looks really cool. And like this just turned out blue. Like you can't even, it's weird. I mean, there's like a tiny little pinkish purpley color underneath there, but like that's floating blue by itself. And then that's Chun Plum with floating blue on top. So uh, I expected it to be different to say the least. And then this, this was the piece that I pulled out last time and I fired it for the second time. And now it has no little holes on it, so it's like perfect. Love it. The thing is really cool. Look how like bright and vibrant that color is. Like I would even say this is a pretty vibrant green and to have this be like... Love it. All right, last thing in here. I have a bunch of glass coasters. So these are white. This has got a giant hole in it, so I'll probably fire that one again. Also, it kind of looks like it like was a little not level. But a lot of them, they all turned out really well. Then we got blue, blue glass coasters. Two, three, four. Those all turned out sweet. So, these are that Chun Plum, and I thought they were gonna turn like pinkish or reddish, purplish, and they did, really didn't, so. Again, not my fave. Not my fave color. So that Chun Plum is good when you put it like on this, this glaze and like this, but by itself, I don't know. Maybe I have to be more it, but I don't know. Comment below and tell me like, is that just my personal preference that I don't really like it? All right, we got some more of these blue, blue glass coasters. Those are. turned out sweet. So yeah, if you guys are having trouble with these, I should do a revised glass coaster video, but you know, you see how like I'm not putting the glass so it covers the whole coaster? That's one key to not having them break. And the other key is to really make the edges like not straight up. So you don't want the pot to be like flat and then straight up on the sides. You want it to be like flat and then you want it to like, come out really gradually. Just so like the glass can spread out. So those two things, I think, do it. I don't break like hardly any anymore. And then the last thing is more of these green, green glass coasters, which these turned out nice. They do have little bubbles on them, so I might have to fire them again. I don't like how, to, how I have to fire these twice a lot. And they always work. Let me fire them, like that one's perfect. But yeah, those are good. And then the last thing, so one thing I wanna do this year for Christmas is Minnesota ornaments. And so I thought that would be cool to put that glass in to the Minnesota, especially because they like kind of just warped a little bit. So I thought, hey, that'll keep that glass in there. So actually that turned out really cool. Minnesota with the glass in there. So then I glazed both sides. So if you glaze both sides, then you have to put them up on stilts. So then you put them up on stilts like that and then they just pop right off the back and then you have a glaze on both sides. This one, they're they're like tiny little sharp so I might just take like sandpaper or grinder and just grind that off. But that's it. The kiln is empty. See that? I'm not hiding anything from you. Oh, another successful kiln. We did it. We did it. All right, again, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment below, tell me what your favorite piece is out of here, tell me if you got any ideas for me, either pots to make, videos to make, appreciate all the support, check out the Patreon page if you wanna support me financially, and don't if you don't. We'll see you in the next video.